man had your throat going backwards. I said, man, stop playing. That's not funny. He said, no, look. I turned around, and I could just see my truck moving backwards. And at that moment, there was nothing I could do. I just stood there, and it was like my soul had left my body. Because my truck was going backwards, and behind my truck was a fence, cars, and a big old street light that Dollar General has in their parking lot. Wow. And I remember just looking at it because I was, my truck was about to plow all of this down. But literally at the last minute, he caught it, and he pulled the brakes, and then he jumped in the driver's seat and pulled back forward. And that was like my last straw with him. I just told him, I said, hey, man, just get the bag. You got to get off the truck. Just get the bag. Just, just, just get the bag. Get the bag. Get the bag. Stay right here. They're going to get you a hotel. I don't know what they're going to do, but you can't be on my truck. I got, you got to go. You, you got to go. You said you got to go. Damn, <laughs> man. So um, so the Dollar General account, uh, you, you rate that a one. Don't do it. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't suggest that on your worst enemy, huh? No, I would not. I would not. Now, there's two sides to Dollar General. Now they have a uh, refrigerated side. Now, that side of Dollar General, I would recommend with the lift gate, the pallet ties, everything. You just grab a pallet jack and you drop that stuff off and you go. But the road tanning side, the dry side, no. I would never recommend that to anyone. All right, man. Next. What's, what's, what's the next company? So after, after that, it was Cisco Foods. Cisco Foods College Park, Atlanta, Georgia. And when I tell you you need a therapist, you needed some type of therapy, some type of counseling after that job, I promise you, you did. Cisco, I was, I would definitely rate Cisco a one out of ten. Never going to recommend. <laughs> I always tell people to run from that company. How did you end up getting with Cisco? Uh, after I dislocated my shoulder, I knew I wasn't good for any type of, you know, delivery service, but. I had applied to the main jobs in Atlanta that were hiring for local drivers and they were mainly delivery service jobs. But I was like, okay, I, I think I could tolerate it. It's going to be a, uh, whatever, what do you call them things? Uh, dolly. It's going to be dolly yes, work. You know, dolly. I could do that. So I had applied to Cisco and I had got the job, but the thing was Cisco wouldn't hire me to be a delivery driver. They only hired me to be a hot shot delivery driver. So there's a difference. The delivery driver is the actual truck driver, and the hot shot is you're in a van and you're running like that. Okay, that don't yeah. sound intriguing. Was you still getting it paid? Wasn't, Was you still getting paid the same amount? No. as it, no. You was getting paid no. less and less. So. Cisco Atlanta was paying twenty dollars an hour to their delivery drivers back in two thousand and I want to say that's fifteen, yeah, two thousand fifteen. So they were paying twenty dollars to them, but because they hired me high shot delivery, they paid me fourteen fifty an hour. Ugh. And the problem that I had, the problem that I had with Cisco was they hired me high shot delivery driver, but they would have me do the actual truck driver's work. They would have drivers go out on routes and not finish their routes. So they would have me go out and finish their routes for them. And since I, you know, I was 22 at the, 22 at the time, mm -hmm. they were taking advantage of me. They never paid me the difference to work the truck. They kept me at fourteen fifty an hour. Oh, that's some, that's some bullshit. Yeah. Oh, that's some bullshit. Right right. Right. So if I'm getting, if I'm driving the van making fourteen fifty an hour, but if I hop in the truck, I need that good 20. Did you, did you, I, did need, you, I need it. Did, did you uh, question that or, or what happened when you questioned that? At the time I was, uh, at the time I was so brand new that I didn't know any better. Um, I didn't have the guidance that, you know, the information that I put out before everybody now, I didn't have that coming from anyone. I didn't learn that until later on after being with them for a while because they used to force me to work six days a week and they were, they were shorthand me like that. So Cisco, Atlanta did something very trifling. What they did was my schedule would normally be 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning to get there. They changed my schedule from that time and started having me come in at 12 in the afternoon. And the reason why they would do that, because more drivers weren't finishing their route, and them drivers, they were still getting paid for that case count. They were still getting paid for that entire route, even if they did not finish. So they would have somebody like me come in. Oh, well, don't worry about AM, PM routes today. I need you to go to Delonica, Georgia, and help a driver finish his route. So I would get to the spot, 
And the drivers knew they were getting paid for it. And their excuse was, oh, I'm past my 11 hours, my 14 hours. I have to go home. So they would jump in the van and just automatically go and leave me with the truck and trailer. And I was obligated to finish that route. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. So uh, one out of 10. <laughs> wouldn't recommend. One out of 10 would not recommend <laughs> and never try again. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Who's next, bro? Marta, Marta Atlanta, the city buses of Atlanta. Now, that job was pretty fun. I was really young, and people loved the fact that I was so young doing it. I was actually one of, not one, but I was actually the youngest driver at Marta at the time. I was 22 going on 23 years old, and I think the biggest compliment was people getting on the bus and looking at me and like, are you old enough to drive this bus, son? So it was, it was a beautiful job. I loved Marta. All right, so this is uh this is like the metro public transportation. So did you have to get did you had your passengers endorsements prior to? Well, no, I'm I'm no, I'm going to assume being coming out of CR England, they they didn't they didn't train you for passengers. So you got your passenger endorsements with them. How did that work out? Oh, uh, it was pretty easy. Uh, back then. Because I think now they have changed the rules and regulations when it comes to getting your CDLs now. But back then, all you had to do was go to the DMV, take a 20-question test, make sure you get all the answers right, and boom, you have your endorsement. Okay, okay. That's without it. without even what without even doing the pre-trip, post-trip, air brakes, all that shit on a on a on a bus. Well, see, they feel as if because you're already a truck driver, I mean, you have it down packed. You have your license. Your license basically says you're a professional driver. You know what you're doing. You know this, you know that. So we don't need to see you actually do this because we feel comp- confident that you got it. All right, all right. <laughs> so uh, so when you got when you got with Marta or, you know, the public transportation and everything, I'm sure they they taught you how to actually drive the bus. What what's the what's the difference in variance between driving a, a a full scale bus versus driving a tractor and trailer? Well, one is like driving a limousine. I've never driven a limousine, but it's basically a long car. Um, the turning radius, everything on it was perfect. I mean, there was just so many streets and roads I could go down with a bus that I can't go down with a truck. When I'm driving a the truck, there's a pivot point on that truck. And I always have to be weary, I mean, be aware of my pivot point when I'm making turns around corners, you know, everything like that. Um, plus, these trucks can weigh Uh-oh. 8,000 pounds illegally. But there's trucks out here that can weigh way more than that with the right permits and stuff. I've seen uh, stuff where trucks weigh over 100,000 pounds total and, you know, stuff like that. So the weight difference was uh, the, the weight difference was a big one. Um, the trucks can weigh 80,000. The bus didn't weigh that much. But see, with the truck, your freight sat still in the back. You never heard from it. But with the bus, your freight walks on, walk off, talk, you know, distractions, everything. So that's the difference between the bus and the truck. All right. So, yo, so, you know, this is Metro. This is public transportation. So uh, what, what was, uh, what, what was uh, uh, a good and bad experience that you had on the, uh, had on the Metro? So because uh, being a young driver, uh, I guess I've had a few good experiences, but my favorite one was uh, a lady. Uh, they were they were worried about getting to the train station. So with the bus, what a lot of people don't know is they allow bus drivers to be late, but you can never be early. You can always be late, but you can never be early. You will get rolled up for being early, but it's okay to be late. So, so that sounds like a reverse. I was on, <laughs> it sounds like a reverse yeah, on yeah. With, in trucking. You can't so, never be late, but it's okay to be early. No, you can't. Yeah, you can't never be late in trucking, but on a bus, you can be late. You just can't be extremely late. So the, the, the perk about that was, you know, every route you had to make sure you would never cross your point uh, too early. So if you were coming up on a point and it says on the paperwork, you're not supposed to be there till 1130 AM and it's 1120, you have to sit there and park until 1135 or 1130 come. And then you can take off. So there was a, the last point on it. There's a last point on every route where once you cross over that last time point, you can just shoot it straight to the train station or wherever you're going. They don't care at that point. And one lady was like, Oh my God, I hope we make it to the train on time. And I said, oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to get you there. 
So literally, once my time point came, I was able to just shoot and implement, which is an, basically is an accommodation for the transit system. So that's a plus. That makes you look good as a driver. That is, so, hey, he's doing his job uh, according to, you know, rules and regulations. He's safe. He's on time. You know, he's professional. So that was a good thing. But uh, one of the bad sides of it was the complaints. Um, I had a lady get on my bus one morning, and she did not have any money on her card. So as a bus, as a as a transit driver, you are allowed to let people on and, on and off your bus for free if you want to. It's not mandatory they pay, but it's at your discretion. You know what I'm saying? They want you to pay. They enforce that everybody pays. But if, if you know someone's having a hard time or something and you just want to help somebody out, it's at your discretion to let them on and off, to let them on the bus for free. Okay. And I had a lady get mad at me one morning because she didn't have the money and she just found every reason to blame me and say I was the reason why she didn't have the money on her card. Uh, you you cleared out my card. I have money on here. There's no money on here now. And I'm like, ma'am, just please go go take a seat. You know, I'm trying to help you out. You can get on the bus for free. Don't worry about it. It's a line of people behind you. And we can't sit here and wait for you to figure out where your money is. So just go ahead and sit down. It's okay. Okay, so let me, um, let, so me stop you, let me stop you right there, man. So she, she trying to make she's trying to make a, a, a uh, a computer issue, your issue. I mean, you don't have nothing to do with the do with the uh, the the automated system. There, you slide the card in. It don't see no money. Then that's it. How can how can she blame you for that, bro? I'm I'm just assuming she was just having a bad morning and she knew her situation. But in the same sense, like there was a lot of people behind her, so she was embarrassed that she had no money because it's not like these buses are quiet when your card declines. It literally makes a da 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 noise, and everybody can hear that. How, how much? <laughs> so how, I think she was much, just doing it to stay safe. How much was it to get on the bus at that time? I, I remember, I remember getting on the bus back in the day when it was like fifty cent. Ah, no, it wasn't that. It was a, it was two dollars and fifty cent in Atlanta at the time. Oh, okay. Well, that's that still ain't bad. That, that, that ain't bad. But I, I, I remember, I, I remember when I caught the bus back in the day. It was like. 50 cent this was rta in cleveland all right man so i mean nice. but it sounds like you had a, a a really good a really good experience with uh with the metro why why you leave uh so and here's another issue with training so in training i was able to do all the routes that i wanted and i was making money i was making like a thousand dollars every two weeks i was able to survive off of that at that age but then once I got out of training, Marta had this thing where they needed full-time drivers, but they would only hire you part-time until they decide to make you full-time. So with full-time, that means you can't get no more than 31 hours a week or something like that. It was something stupid and crazy. So I was only making about three to $500 every two weeks after training by myself. And I didn't just give up right away. I would go in every day, hey, do you know when they're going to make us full-time? Hey, do you know when they're going to make us full-time? And I think I did this for about three weeks straight before I became burned out. Before I became burned out because I'm just like, hey, hey, hey. Because after three weeks, I stopped asking. And I went one month, two months, and I was still making three to $500 every two weeks. That's, and I couldn't survive off of that. that. This is every two weeks. This is as worse as you getting paid about 100 200 with uh, CR England. What the fuck, man? that's what I was saying. And, and, and it was hard because I, and you know, back then I used to ask them the question, how do you expect grown people, grown ass people to survive off a of little to no pay? In it Atlanta, work Georgia, like that. by the way, in Atlanta, Georgia, on top of that. And it's crazy because Marta had the money. They had the positions open. They needed filled, but they would not make us full time by the way. Wow, man. That's, that's crazy. All right, man. Uh, all right, so moving on. What's what's next? Next was KLLM Transport. I can't rate them because I didn't give them a fair chance. Uh, over there, I was leasing a truck. Um, I didn't have a bad experience with KLLM Transport. So I basically just transferred over to their sister company, uh, FFE, which is Frozen Food Express, um, out of, what is it, Texas, uh, Lancaster, Texas. What, what what would you all right so the uh, like what you was only with them for a month and you you jumped into leasing why why did you jump into leasing and only stay with them for that short period of time 
Um, I jumped into leasing because it was something I did not have experience in uh, in the industry. And I was like, okay, maybe this is something I want to do. Maybe I can make a bunch of money. You know, the, 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 the goal is, the end goal is to make money in this industry. And I had no knowledge of, you know, leasing a truck or owning a truck. So I, I had the company driver's mentality. And that's the wrong mentality to have. Because I was just fueling up the truck like a company driver and not realizing this was coming out of my pay settlement. <laughs> I'm filling that truck up. Okay, okay. So, uh, so I, I, I'm not going to say I had a bad experience with KM Transport. I mean, I made decent money, but at the time I was still young and I didn't want to be over the road. I didn't want to experience that life 100%. I wanted to be home. And that's why I transferred over to SFC because they offered me home time and a set minimum guaranteed pay every week. All right. What, what, what was your experience with them and what would you rate them at? Ah, uh, Frozen Food Express, I'm giving them a 7 out of 10. Uh, I, that was one of the best experiences I've had as a truck driver. Um, it was like it was like bread and butter over there for me. It was cakewalk, everything. I, I got in cool with the uh, management and the drive, uh, driver managers and the person in the window. So every day was like a sunshiny day to me. I, I was a regional driver for them. I was a trainer for them. I was a local driver for them. And I was also a yard, a yard driver for them. So uh, FFP was a good experience. Um, I wanted more money. I did want more money, but I was actually pretty happy over there. I have no complaints about this. So a 7 out of 10, I would definitely recommend. So why did we leave? Um, I ended up getting in a relationship at the time and we wanted to team drive. So I didn't want to team drive. Well, it's, I, it's not that I did not want to team drive with FFC. My uh, partner at the time wasn't approved through the company. And when you're in a relationship, you do anything for a relationship, you know, especially being young. So that's what I did. I, I left to go to another company, and I and I regretted that. I did regret that decision. Hey, so the next company is the company that you team drive. What, what, what was up with that? The first one, Quest Global. Uh, I'm going to recommend Quest Global 6 out of 10. Uh, I don't know what their pay scale is now. Back then it was sucky, but for team drivers, I, I thought back then it made sense. They were paying like 25 cents per mile per driver, or I don't remember if it was per driver or split, but I think it was per driver, 25 cents per driver, and it was all miles to the truck or something like that. So I was like, okay, you know, that's cool. You can make some money. But, you know, again, back then, you, you, you know what I'm saying? I've never been over the road 100%. So I thought that was good. I was like, okay, 25 cents. People are talking about they make a $2,000 text and stuff like this. I'm like, okay, well, we're going to make this happen. We're in a relationship. We're going to drive this truck and we're going to do this. It's going to be cakewalk. We're going to be booed up. We're going to be driving. We're going to see the country. We're going to do all that. <laughs> and body, I was wrong. Body, body, was wrong. body, body, body <laughs> rocking in the, in the, in the truck on, uh, <laughs> you know, while we getting hemmed up at the, uh, at the shippers and receivers and all like that, just close the curtains and, Man. and, and get it on. What, 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 what happened? What, what made it, uh, what made it sour between you and her? Uh, so, uh, well, let me let me go ahead and uh, throw this out there. I'm definitely a well, part of the LGBT hold on, let me, let, LGBT. Let, let me let me back it up a little bit. How did, now? I, yeah. Now she's now she was a truck driver. So how did y'all how did y'all do me? Well, I'm part of the LGBT community. So, uh, oh, oh me, okay, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 yeah. It, you know, it's just like a regular meeting. Just you know, a uh, dating app. We met each other. We decided to team with each other. Uh, but it was, woo, for lack of better words, it was hell on earth. It was definitely hell on earth. Um, we lasted about two and a half years, and it was just too much for me. But it was just, you know, you, you can't do a job like that. You can't do a job like that. And uh, you don't sit where you sleep, basically. Let me go ahead and put it like that. And I learned that lesson really tough. Unless you're married or really committed to a person, don't don't ever work with that person because it's going to be hell on earth, uh, they, especially if they're insecure. Nobody can walk up and talk to you without a problem, and it was just, it just became too much for me. It was all right, but y'all y'all try to make it happen throughout the throughout the two years, right? Yeah, we tried, we tried, but it was like Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, and you know, in, in a ring every every other weekend. It, it was just crazy. It, it wasn't it wasn't going to work that way. And you know, I was I, I was uh, I was telling people about that because I seen this TikToker. She says that. Um, 
that uh you know get 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 find yourself a partner girlfriend boyfriend partner or whatever and go team driving and and make the bad she trying to make it sound like it's all easy happy happy joy joy just like the rest of these tiktokers on here that's trying to make trucking like you know it's like like a disco but here you are actually had a partner both of y'all was trucking y'all thought y'all 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 thought it would be y'all y'all thought it would be would be gravy but it, it it was more so of a problem than it was great you know because it is like a disco out here uh but it's just the person you choose and <laughs> had me and this person i guess really just taking some more time to get to know each other we probably want to put ourselves in a situation like that but some couples actually make it work because you really have to ask yourself, like when you're dating somebody, you don't date them just to date them. You date them to marry them. You date them for the long term, you know, things of it all. And we were on two different pages in life. We were just two different people. And it was just, it just became an issue. We started butting heads a little bit more and stuff like that. So yeah, I had more experience. That person had less experience. It, it just became an issue. We just started, just stupid shit started happening. So yeah. I'm not saying that it is not disco and it's not fun if you get the right person. Yeah, if you get the right person, it's cakewalk out here. It's like it's like paradise. It's like a vacation every day. Because when you love what you do, it's like you never ever work. All right. So, so would you safely say it was because of trucking? While you know, was it because of trucking that your relationship turned sour? Nah, nah. Uh, it was just because of who we were. And we just couldn't seem to coincide with each other. So that was that was a us problem, not trucking problem. Trucking had nothing to do with it. All right, that's what's up. All right. What wait. Now what 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 company was this and what did you rate it at? Quest Quest Global Incorporated and I think I gave them a six out of ten. All right, so you'll recommend Quest Global. Yeah, I, I would recommend Quest Global though. And it wasn't because of the pay, it was because the people there were so amazing. The people there were so amazing. Um, I was a dispatcher for them, and I was a driver for them, so I saw both sides of it. And, I mean, literally, these were some of the most down-home, really nice, genuine uh, people that you'll ever meet in your lifetime. So, yeah, I would recommend them. Hey, what's next, bro? And how many How many more? Oh, man, too many more. Let's, don't ask that question. Too many more. I have a few more, though. Uh, so, Linda Trucking was next. Uh, I rated them a 9 out of 10. I would definitely recommend. Wait, 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 wait. You, you, wait, wait. Who? Who? A 9 out of 10? Who? L Lindig Trucking and uh, Johnson City, Texas. Okay. Lindig Trucking. Okay. What's, I would what's, definitely recommend them. Okay. What's the deal with um, them and why did you leave? So after Quest Global is when I started to, I did like a 360. I started going from big name companies because everybody I named was huge name company. I started like, you know what? Let me take my chances elsewhere. So I started going to smaller companies. And the reason why I rated them a nine out of 10, would definitely recommend, definitely try them again because they were just amazing people in Texas. First off, Texas is a red state, okay? So I'm going to automatically assume majority of the people there are going to have some ignorant way of thinking when it comes to life, when it comes to people. So, no, they weren't like that. They were very, like I said, down home, down to earth, very understanding. You know, I became really cool with the boss's daughter. And, you know, they were of the palm complexion. I became really cool with her where we were always talking on the phone and stuff like that. And, you know, like she was really cool. Like they were a really cool company to deal with. Um, the money out there was amazing. The money was amazing. Uh, that was the first time I've made $2,795 $2, after taxes for the first time in my life Ooh, at this point in trucking. Okay. And this was for one week. And I'm like, oh, you can make the money out here? And, you know, they loved me. I loved them. And, you know, they knew I was one of the one of them. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, class kids who went pop. Death to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, bars, you got pops. Heard you writing Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom to me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rum, pump, pump. Y'all fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.